I've been over this a few times, but uh, when it comes to the United Kingdom, it is a more varied climate than people uh, would originally anticipate. And I won't go into too much depth into why that's the case. I've done that in other videos, but I will talk about a little known subtropical paradise in southern England. And if you're not from the United Kingdom, this might be very surprising to you. Well, the UK, as I said, has a little known subtropical climate. Well, sort of, but we'll get into the nitty gritty in a second, particularly in parts of Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly. And uh, they have a unique microclimate, quite unlike the rest of the country, since the UK is generally known for its temperate and often cool, wet climate. Uh, Cornwall's coastal areas enjoy an exceptional exceptional microclimate due to a combination of geographic and ocean, uh, oceanographic factors. And uh, we're going to talk about that uh, a little bit in this video. So firstly, I'd like to talk about the geographic location and latitude of uh, this this uh, so-called subtropical paradise in the southern tip of England. And uh, Cornwall is located at the southern uh, southwestern tip of England, with parts of the region lying between the latitudes of 49 degrees and 59 degree, uh, 50 degrees north. Sorry. And despite this relatively high latitude, comparable to much colder places like Newfoundland in Canada, the local climate is remarkably mild. And the, the, the most important part of this is, is it's mild in winter. So the primary contributor to Cornwall's mild, uh, winter mild weather is the Gulf Stream, which obviously we've been through this before. Uh, before. Most people understand that this is a powerful uh, oceanic current that originates in the Gulf of Mexico. And this warm current flows across the Atlantic, bringing tropical warmth towards uh, Western Europe and some parts of Northern Europe. And uh, as it reaches high latitudes, it becomes known as the North Atlantic Drift, which uh, con uh, continues to transport this warm water along the western coasts of Europe, uh, namely Cornwall. And what this does is create like a, a temperature buffer. And since the Gulf Stream transports vast amounts of warm water northwards, when this warm water reaches the North Atlantic Drift and flows along the UK's western coastline, it raises air temperature uh, above what would be expected for this a uh, relatively high latitude. Cornwall's close proximity to the Atlantic Ocean allows it to benefit significantly from this warm current. Actually, it's probably one of the leading causes to how mild the climate of Cornwall actually is, since it's a peninsula and uh, it's surrounded on each side by this warm current. And this keeps temperatures much milder than uh, even further inland areas. And uh, another contributor to this is the warm air masses. And as the warm uh, ocean current moves north, they warm the air above the water. And the westerly winds carry these mild air masses over Cornwall, prevent extreme drops in temperature. And this effect is especially pronounced along the coasts, where these microclimates are, where you find really exotic, almost tropical style plants. Plants of which that you can't really plant anywhere else in the country outside to the degree that they do. And uh, where these ocean temperatures change far less dramatically than the land temperatures, you see this difference, this uh, essentially a thermal buffer against cold snaps, even extremely cold snaps, which we saw in like 2012. Uh, this part of the country didn't see such low temperatures. It barely even saw frost. Um, so we then move on to the maritime climate. One of the, uh, specifically for this, uh, the maritime, temperate maritime climate is one of the rarest climate types on the planet. Mind you, a lot of people don't know that, which makes Britain quite unique and Western Europe quite unique in some ways. Um, Cornwall's position on the edge of the Atlantic Ocean means it has the maritime climate, the famous, you know, temperate, uh, changeable maritime climate, which is characterized by the moderate, stable temperatures and high humidity throughout the year. And the sea moderates Cornwall's temperatures year round, reducing the range on an extreme level between highs and lows, minimizing winter chill. That's the important part. That's the important part why a lot of people could consider parts of Cornwall a almost subtropical climate with plant hardiness zones similar to that of parts of Mexico uh, on the east coast, on the west coast of Mexico. And with this thermal inertia of water, uh, water heats up and cools down much more slowly than land. Uh, we've been through this, but Cornwall's coastal areas uh, obviously get through uh, get the, 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 the brunt of this, the benefit of this. And therefore, they benefit from the ocean's uh, slower temperature change and staying warmer in winter as the ocean uh, releases stored summer warmth over a prolonged period. So, the moderating effects of humidity 
The high humidity in Cornwall helps prevent rapid temperature drops during winter nights, and this is due to the heat trapping effect of water vapour in the air, which acts as a natural insulator, uh, retaining warmth and preventing overnight frosts. Uh, combined with the moist sea breeze, uh, this creates a more consistently mild winter environment. And the point of this is that when you get cold snaps in winter uh, across the country, across Europe, this is the thing that does the most damage to exotic plants. They can deal with, you know, minor frosts, um, even more significant frost, say if it's from like a desert region that has cold uh, winter temperatures now and again. But when you get a cold snap, and this is say, a, uh, when I say snap, I'm talking like a, a week uh, maybe five, five to six days of cold temperatures below freezing, that's a cold snap. And plants need the warmth at least to a point where it reaches above zero degrees Celsius and, uh, you know, defrosts the plant. If this doesn't defrost and it stays in these sub minus uh, conditions, um, sub positive conditions, then you're going to see extreme damage in tropical plants. Uh, because Cornwall doesn't experience this, that's where you get these unique microclimates. Now, another contributing factor to Cornwall's uh, exotic subtropical feel is the southwesterly wind patterns. And a lot of the UK feels this, but it is more pronounced. Emphasis on pronounced in uh, Cornwall, since it's uh, it's more southwest than a lot of the rest of the UK. The prevailing wind in Cornwall comes from the southwest. Most of the year, this is where it's going to come from. And it blows straight in from the Atlantic. And these winds are both mild and moisture laden, which keeps the region warmer and wetter than other parts of the UK and uh, Europe during winter. And this westerly wind from the Atlantic uh, obviously travels over the relatively warm Atlantic Ocean before reaching Cornwall in winter, especially. And this brings the warmer temperatures and uh, the more moderated uh, seasonal uh, variation in temperature too. Uh, and because of its position as a peninsula, the reduced continental influence has a big impact. And unlike areas in continental Europe, let's say France, uh, Germany, which can be affected by cold, dry winds from Siberia, Cornwall's westerly winds prevent this colder air from settling in the region. And by contrast, countries further inland in Europe, as I said, such as Germany or Poland, don't experience these same westerlies and this oceanic buffer to the same degree that Cornwall does and a lot of the western part of the UK does in fact. Now we move on to Cornwall's topography and the sheltered valleys and a lot of people don't know this but there's a lot of valleys in Cornwall and uh, the geography of Cornwall plays an important role in trapping this warmth that comes in from the ocean and the westerlies particularly along its coasts and the sheltered valleys like we said creating many areas of microclimates that are warmer than surrounding regions. So Cornwall's landscape includes these valleys, like I said, and low-lying areas that provide natural shelter from colder winds. And these valleys act as heat traps, where warm air lingers longer than in exposed areas. And this creates a lot of microclimates. There's almost too many to, uh, to, to mention, in fact. Um, uh, most, you know, most of these are on the coast, obviously. And these are warmer than the surrounding regions and the surrounding terrain, allowing for the growth of more subtropical plants and even, you know, extremely frost sensitive plants. Some of these part some of these regions, these microclimates, do not experience a single day of frost throughout the year, even during like extreme prolonged winter spells. Um and that is kind of crazy, as I said, considering the latitude of this place. Um, coastal towns in Cornwall, such as Penzance and St. Miles, uh, benefit from this proximity to the ocean and uh, protection from inland hills. And the ocean-facing landscape captures this warmth air. Uh, and while the rugged hills protect against the cold inland air, uh, further stabilising temperatures throughout the year, especially in winter. And in the UK, we have the, ad uh, the absence of severe winter systems this is something some, some, some people forget and uh, in Cornwall they rarely experience the severe winter weather systems that affect continental Europe thanks to the location as I said on the Atlantic's uh, eastern edge the majority of Cornwall's winter storms are extra tropical cyclones while capable of bringing rain and high winds typically they don't drop temperatures dramatically and because of this there's less polar influence Cornwall's maritime climate means it's less influenced by Arctic or polar air masses, which bring frigid temperatures to places further east on the east coast. For instance, continental countries like Germany or Poland are more affected by cold winds moving down from Scandinavia or Russia. Cornwall's weather systems are actually usually milder. Uh, Atlantic fronts, which lack the intense cold, uh, the cold of Arctic or uh, continental systems. 
Snowfall, uh, snowfall and frost are quite rare when you come to these uh, parts of uh, Cornwall, especially the microclimates. And uh, because there's coastal warmth and high humidity, we don't get as much snow or frost. When cold air does manage to reach this part of the UK, it tends to lose potency by the time it reaches Cornwall due to the moderating effect of the Atlantic. This means that even when the UK sees a cold snap, Cornwall usually remains relatively mild. Now, this is the future um, a lot of people have talked, I've seen a lot of articles talk about the future of the UK, especially in relation to climate change and whatnot. Um, we are actually seeing, maybe, possibly, uh, evidence that Cornwall might be the start of um, even further hardiness shifts in the UK, where it might go even warmer in winter. And uh, over recent decades, you know, regardless of how it's happening, the climate of Cornwall has got warmer, which in turn has amplified Cornwall's mild weather conditions. And it's, it's quite pronounced here. If you go to Cornwall, if you ever have a trip to Cornwall, you'll see a lot of suburban gardens have plenty of exotic plants. And you can argue that's because exotic plants have been uh, made more readily available in the UK, they're more uh, commercialised in the UK now. But this is because people and temperatures have suddenly uh, <laughs> warmed <laughs> to the subtropical effect of this maritime climate. And um, as Cornwall's already mild winter temperatures are becoming even milder, you'll see more of these subtropical um, plant styles uh, in care. Um, and this often helps due to the fact of the prolonged growing season this peninsula has. And the combination of mild winters and warm autumns especially uh, has extended Cornwall's growing season, allowing the subtropical and tropical plants to thrive in outdoor gardens like Trevor Gardens and Tresco Abbey Gardens and the Isles of Scilly. And the Isles of Scilly is an ex exemplary case of how the future of Cornwall could go, since you have temperatures on, on the Isles of Scilly that are comparable to the Canary Isles uh, in winter. So, for example, in Canary Isles, you're very rarely, if ever, going to get a frost, maybe in the mountainous region. Um, but it's very extremely unlikely you're going to get um, a frost. And this is the case in the Isles of uh, Scilly. You don't see frost. It is extremely rare to see a, fr a ground frost. You might get an air frost, but ground frosts are extremely unlikely. You have temperatures uh, not going any lower than 4 degrees Celsius in, uh, in, in the depth of winter, which is absolutely insane. And it just shows uh, how powerful the moderating effect of the ocean is, the, the, the eastern part of the Atlantic Ocean is. Um, so you're going to see more um, exotic plants and you're going to see more diverse ranges of plants. Uh, as, as I said, the winter temperatures are kept uh, above a minimum of zero degrees Celsius, which is fascinating. It's kind of strange uh, how, how such a high latitude part of the world can have such an exotic, well, seemingly exotic climate. Um, obviously, it's not considered technically subtropical, but plant hardiness wise, maybe. And it's food for thought. So, yeah, Cornwall interesting place if you ever get a chance have a visit